Hello, my name is Anna Wilson. I am a sophomore at McMurray College. And, um, my presentation is on the oppression of an educated black man. Mm -hmm. Like the history of the oppression against uh, African Americans. I go back to uh, Jim Crow, the Jim Crow laws, which were set to uh, make um, white people, like, I mean, white Americans not lose their power and still have, like, white supremacy over African Americans. And they use these laws in <coughs> economic, political, legal, social, and personal. And it developed during the 1800s to, I mean, late, late 1800s to early 1900s. Prejudices is an unfavorable opinion formed against a person or group based on stereotype. And a stereotype is generalized a generalized image of a person or group which does not acknowledge individual differences in which is often prejudicial to that person or group. Which we assume that a certain group has like certain characteristics about themselves that usually aren't like true. My personal preferences against black men are, I think they're all, not all of them, and educated ones are all thugs. Most of them are lazy, and some of them are dumb, like, to me, because they don't finish their education, and I just like, like, that's stupid, like, you're wasting your time. And, oops. Uh, <coughs> ways I have discriminated. They did not sign my race. I have dated black men before, but, you know, my, my preference was out anybody other than yeah, and then stereotyping, I'm guilty of that. Um, was it nothing that's less? Because I feel like, like if you couldn't take the time out, like if you had all this opportunity to give it to us and then you couldn't take the time out to, you know, take the time to get your education and stuff. And then they're all on welfare because, you know, they're not, they don't have the high school education and they can't get jobs and so they have to rely on government assistance to, you know, help them out in life. And then them as a, but <coughs> their culture, I look at them as living in the ghetto or the projects or all listening to like oppressive like hip hop music that just puts everybody down. I don't mean everybody, but women and themselves and uh, usually single parent homes, mostly moms, you know, and welfare again. And then goals which change my way of thinking which you know I'm not I don't think like this like all the time like I give people chances like, it's not like this but yeah change my um like stop judging a book by his cover I don't want to you know see him like oh he must be a thug or something like that like, he must be dumb and then you know get to know them and then educate myself like I don't know, just like walk in their shoes, maybe even for a little, not even for like a whole day, but for a little bit, just experience how they live their life, you know, see that it's not what I think it is, it could be something different. And then, you know, spend some time with them, maybe. And then, so I can help someone else who might have the same problem, by right? letting them experience those things with me and then teaching them not to judge too. And, um, for my interview, I interviewed a 23-year-old male, and I asked him what was the house he, that he, what was the house like he lived in, or he grew up in, and it was nice. It was a big house. It was old. Uh, he had a nice bedroom. It was nice and big, and it was like he didn't share a room or anything. It was carpeted for. I don't know why, but he didn't mention that. But yeah, it's nice. And um, the group in the neighborhood he, he grew up in was very peaceful and uh, quiet, you know, not much happening. He said it wasn't unless him and his friends were doing something dumb, other than that, it was a peaceful thing. Um, and then I asked him about school, like how he described himself as a student. And he was like, he didn't, you know, he was not, he wasn't very social and he didn't really go to class or do the work. 
I guess school wasn't for him. And then I asked him what would people find surprising about him as a teen. His dad was a pastor. You would not know that if you knew him. <laughs> um, and I asked him, did he, uh, did he attend college? No, he did not finish high school. So he already get his GED, so he didn't go into college. <coughs> and um, I asked him what was the most important thing to his parents. And he said education and religion. And then throughout his life, the thing that has stayed the same, uh, he has the same goofy personality. But his attitude has changed. I don't know. I feel like his attitude is more negative. I don't know if it's more than positive, but he doesn't think positive anymore about things. It's all down here. And then I asked him about his first job. I didn't really know the name for this. He didn't have a name for this. So I just, you know, put a description of what he did, like going door to door, passing out flyers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then his ideal job would be a welder or work in a factory. Uh, he doesn't have any children. And family means loyalty, love, and all that good stuff. Words and <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he's, he's never had his heart broken, but he has broken a lot of hearts. That's what he does. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> um, and I was like, uh, a barrier or obstacle. Um, he was like smoking cigarettes. And he feels, now that he stopped doing it, he feels healthier. And he, like, he likes it because he can tease his friends about it. Like, oh, you don't have cigarettes, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and so, yeah. And then the accomplishment he is most proud of is he bought his first car. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's the end of my presentation. Any questions? Nope.